Okay. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have uh, Vladimir Vonik from uh, Gijeldoyan University. Yeah, Gilo uh, yeah okay. okay. Uh, and I'm, um, I apologize for all my mispronunciations. And it will speak today about function theory and special domain. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So actually, my title is a little longer, and these two special domains that I want to talk mainly are the symmetrized bike disk or poly disk and the tetra block. So uh, actually, I think that I prepared a little more slides than I. I can show, so at some point I will skip probably some of the slides. Uh, so what is the aim of my talk? The aim is to um, draw your attention to these two domains that started or that, that uh, started to be investigated somewhere at the in the at the end of 90s and that proved to be interesting from the point of view of the function theory, but not only, also operator theory, and the field where it uh, comes from, it's so-called mucin phases. But as I said, I will concentrate on um, interesting properties of these domains for people who are working in complex analysis mainly and uh, it will be it, it has a survey character so i will give you no proofs only the results and definitions and some words of explanation so i hope that you will find these domains interesting and worth studying because i think that still there are some problems that could be done and i am also convinced that uh, many more applications of these domains uh, will be found in the future. So, so this is more or less what I have already spoken. So uh, actually it is Nicholas Young who was the main author of several papers uh, where he started to investigate this, the first domain, this, this so-called symmetrized by disk, but also some other names uh, are very uh, worth mentioning at this point. This is, for instance, uh, 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 Jim Agler, also uh, Zinaida Likova, and many, many others. I will mention them um, in the sequel. Uh, so, uh, this domain is closely, also closely related to the spectral ball. I will not say if, uh, uh, a lot about the spectral ball. Nevertheless, there is a close connection between those do, these two domains and a few words will be uh, devoted also to that domain. Uh, so, the second domain appeared some about 10 years later. It was around 2007 and once more, it was Nicholas Young and others uh, who introduced this domain. Mm, it's this time three-dimensional uh, and the study of this domain is much more complicated and there are still some problems that I may formulate. Uh, nevertheless, although these two domains seem to be defined in different way, uh, they've got many properties that there's two domains share. Nevertheless, there are also many other properties that are that are different for these two domains. And it's still not fully understood what why it happens so. So I uh, yeah I so I think that still there is a lot of to do, especially with this tetra block. So the definition is given as follows. So this is uh, the um, polynomial mapping from Cn to Cn and the coordinates are symmetric, elementary symmetric polynomials. So maybe as this is the n-dimensional version. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm interested mainly in two-dimensional case. So maybe 
I have also prepared a few words that I wrote. So you can see the first expression is the, this um, two-dimensional version. So we are having two, uh, two, two, two coordinates is the sum of the, uh, of the variables and the product. So this is the two-dimensional version. Uh, and then we define the symmetrized polydisc as the image of this mapping of the polydisc. Certainly the case n equal to one is trivial, is the unit disk. So actually we are interested only in the case and bigger than one. Uh, one may also define the GN as the set of n tuples. It's elementary uh, such that um, they are uh, they are uh, coefficients of a polynomial of the degree n with the roots lying, all the roots lying in D. Uh, as to the um, function, the mapping pi n, we know that when restricted to the polydisc, it's a proper holomorphic mapping with multiplicity n factorial. Uh, actually, this mapping as defined on Cn to Cn is also proper with the same multi multiplicity, certainly. Uh, and what the uh, symmetrized polydisc makes interesting is that first, it's a hyperconvex domain, so from the point of view of the pluripotential theory, it's regular, quite regular, and it's not, con not convex. And here are the points uh, which uh, are which uh, show that this convexity does not hold. It's elementary, and the theorem that was the starting point for the research in the function theory is the result is the theorem of that was proven uh, actually in, in to some extent uh, independently by Costara and Agler and Young around 2004. And the result is as follows. G2 is not by holomorphic to a convex domain. And the second property is that the Lampert function, the Lampert is denoted by L and the Karatodori pseudo distance are equal. I wrote the definition here. So as you see, uh, the Lampert function is defined, or maybe I should draw a picture and then. So we are having the domain D, e, and then we are considering, and here we are having the unit disk, we are considering the mapping F, uh, small f, and then we are considering the mappings from uh, the domain D to the unit disk, capital F. We are having here two points, W and Z. So uh, here we are having the metric space DP, P is the Poincaré distance. And the definition is as follows. It's the, so actually F uh, Lampert function, which is defined here. So we, we should have uh, this picture in memory and the definition is as follows. Lampert function is the smallest possible value distance of the pre-images of points W and Z when taken along the analytic disks uh, joining W and Z. Uh, analogous, analogously, we define the Karatodori pseudo distance as the supremum of the, of the distances with respect to the Poincaré distance of the images of the holomorphic mapping from, uh, from uh, the domain D to the unit disk. Uh, so these two functions are holomorphically invariant. So they are, uh, with respect to holomorphic mappings, they are uh, decreasing They are uh, and they are, uh, oh, sorry. So I put it in the, the, other, in the opposite direction. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, 
Lampert is the biggest, whereas the Carnot-Todor is the smallest. And uh, the functions that are in between are, for instance, Kobayashi, uh, green, pluricomplex green function up to some normalization. These are examples. And what the result of Costara and Agler and Young says that the Lampert function and the uh, Carnot-Todor pseudo distance are equal. And this is the same as the Lampert theorem, which states that this equality, that the equality between the Lampert function and Karatodori to the distant hold for all convex domains or biholomorphic to a convex domain or another class of domains strongly linearly convex one. Uh, so this is the second uh, property. This is the Lampert theory. And this first, G2 is not biholomorphic to a convex domain. And why is it interesting? It was the first domain that was non-trivial, or in other words, had some reasonable regularity properties from the point of view of complex analysis, like pseudo-convexity and bounded, where uh, the Lampert theorem held. So this was the first example. It was not clear over 20 years whether um, such examples exist or not. So from that point, this domain um, it was studied by complex analysts. Uh, as to some of the properties of the symmetrized polydisc, let me mention here the following one. Uh, one may produce um, holomorphic uh, mappings between the symmetrized polydisc and itself uh, by um, uh, by from uh, some uh, holomorphic mapping from the unit disk to unit disk. This is definition is given over there. And it turns out, so certainly this is, this is relatively easy to see that this capital F mm, with uh, index F small is holomorphic. Uh, but what is essential is that all proper holomorphic mapping between Gn and Gn come from, in that procedure, from Blaschke, finite Blaschke product, in other words, from proper holomorphic mappings of the unit disk. So actually, this uh, domain lies somewhere in between a very um, small a uh, number of proper holomorphic mapping and uh, the class of proper holomorphic mapping between between uh, the polydisc. Because often I will refer uh, this uh, domain to, to, to the polydisc. Actually, uh, when we uh, reduce our interest to automorphism, that it turns out that also the group of automorphism is uh, exactly parametrized by automorphism of the unit disk. So this is completely solved and known. Uh, so we see that the orbit of the origin is the image of, 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 of this uh, point. It's one dimensional, certainly in this case. As I mentioned, there is a connection between the symmetrized polydisc and uh, uh, spectral unit ball. I, as I mentioned, I don't want to say a, a lot about the spectral unit ball, but it's the space of uh, squared n times n matrices having the spectral radius smaller than one. So it's some unbounded uh, but uh, hyperconvex, uh, unbounded, sorry, but pseudo-convex domain in Cn square. There is a connection between this um, natural connection between the spectral unit ball and uh, symmetrized polydisc, which also gives a tool to, to reduce some of the problems of the spectral unit ball, which is a big domain, much more complicated than the symmetrized polydisc. So this, this connection relates somehow the geometry of the spectral unit ball and the polydisc, the symmetrized polydisc. So as I mentioned, so that 
could help understand, for instance, to some extent, the form of automorphism of the uh, spectral unit ball. Uh, and actually, um, as to the problem of automorphism of the spectral unit ball, there was some, uh, some, some uh, conjecture formulated in the beginning of the 90s by Ransford and White about the form. Uh, of of this uh, automorphism that was at some years ago a negative answer for for the description of this uh, automorphism was found by Kosinski and then later uh, later uh, his works uh, his work his method inspired Kuchebau and Andres to 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 have some work on density property in special surfaces, but as I mentioned, this is not the the main uh, topic I want to talk about. Uh, so, first, actually, important and uh, fully understood relation is. Uh, given between the different dimensions of the symmetrized polities. So, so, as I mentioned, the most interesting is the case in n equal to 2, and it turns out that in higher dimension, the domain is uh, much uh, less, it's less, it's not as nice and in dimension 2. And I will formulate it in this theorem, which gives us uh, this this equality. So, as we see, only for n equal to two. So, with the exception of n equal to one, which is uh, trivial. So, maybe, but but as I mentioned, so only for n equal to two, we are having the Lampert theorem. So, it's the second point. Uh, also, uh, the, the the third point, the the, the equality between uh, its uh, Kobayashi Roy and pseudometric and gamma. Pseudometric. This is maybe formulated as the infinitesimal version of the of the of the Lampert theorem. I don't want to give, I don't want to give details of this uh, functions. Uh, also, G n is c convex, and as to c convexity, I also prepared the definition. So we are having some domain in C n. Uh, which is called C convex if the intersection with any, so we are having here the, oops, so maybe the, another picture. So we are having the domain and the intersection with any complex line is, as I mentioned here, uh, connected and simply connected for all complex lines lying in CN. So this is the some complex version of the convexity. And so G2 is C convex and in higher dimension, the domains are not C convex. Uh, also uh, in the definition of the Lampert function, it is relatively clear that the, lamp, uh, that the triangle inequality does not have to be satisfied and in fact for higher dimension, the Lampert function doesn't, is not satisfied, the, the triangle inequality for the Lampert function is not satisfied and only for n equal to two, g n is a Lucky kang domain. In other words, the, 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 the Bergman kernel has no, no zeros. So this is relatively uh, complete picture of the difference between two and higher dimensional cases. Uh, but as I mentioned, this theorem. Ah, so fr from this uh, description, also we may relatively easily conclude that uh, G n cannot be exhausted by domains by holomorphic to convex ones, because if it were, then we would have the Lampert theorem. Uh, but nevertheless, although uh, it theoretically could be proven, it turns out that uh, it cannot be also exhausted by uh, domains by holomorphic to uh, convex ones for dimension two. So now, uh, now I will concentrate mainly on G2. G2 may be defined, described analytically uh, in, with, with this one inequality. And it turns out that this analytic description 
led us to constructing a class of strictly linearly or strongly linearly convex domains in C2, given explicitly by this formula, uh, which exhaust the symmetrized by disk and are strongly linearly convex. So what does it mean? It means that actually, although in the beginning we couldn't prove, uh, the, the proof was ad hoc proof, uh, the proof of, of the equality of Lempert and Caratodori was ad hoc, uh, it turns out that however it comes uh, this, this this fact, this theorem, could be proven also from the Lempert theorem. So, uh, why? Because the Lempert theorem also holds for strongly linearly convex domains and some by some trivial uh, properties of, of these invariant functions, but also for the domain that is exhausted by such domains. So, still, the question may be formulated whether there, are, there is some domain, non-trivial one, for which the equality of the, the, this two function holds, and that uh, this equality cannot be proven by the Lampert theory. Uh, so, and simultaneously, it makes the question on the equality between the Lampert and Caratodori for all C-convex domains very interesting. And I will formulate at the end of my talk several questions that are interesting. And I think that this one would be the most interesting one uh, because that would extend the Lampert theorem to a mm, relatively much bigger uh, class of domains and it will require probably new tools. Additionally this, additionally, these domains turned out to be the first examples of strongly linearly convex domains that were not, uh, that could not be exhausted by domains by holomorphic to co uh, convex ones. This problem was posed probably in 90s or even earlier uh, and was not open also over, over 20 years. Uh, the, the problem was uh, studied mainly by some Russian, Russians, uh, Zdaminsky and others. Uh, quite recently, it turned out that this domain actually existed and was studied in the complex analysis. In a very recent paper of Bhattacharya and his collaborators, they mm, found out uh, they, they, they found another equivalent description of the domain uh, via some unbounded realization. So actually they arrived at this form and the biholomorphism, so if we already have this description, then the biholomorphism is very uh, easy to, form, to, to, to construct and, uh, and then to verify that it's really biholomorphism. Uh, and what does it mean? Uh, that this domain up to biholomorphism was already studied, was in the list of, 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 of uh, hyperbolic manifolds uh, in many of the papers of Isayev who, who, who made um, uh, uh, research on characterization of, of hyperbolic manifolds with big uh, automorphism, uh, relatively big automorphism groups. So uh, now I will give several examples of phenomena that appear in different parts of complex analysis and which uh, show some counterexamples or some, some interesting phenomena which uh, for which uh, this symmetrized by which this symmetrized by disk has. So, for instance, S2 extension property. The, the general problem of the, the, what is the extension property? So, this is the definition. So, we are trying to find or to, to characterize some sets V in the domain D having the extension property. The extension property is as follows. Any Mapping, holomorphic mapping on V 
in bounded in the light whose image is in D has the extension to 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 the holomorphic mapping on the whole domain D uh, lying also in the unit disk. This problem uh, goes back to Rudin's book. And the first big solution, big result, is due to Agler and McCarthy in the paper in Annals, where a complete solution in D2 was found. Uh, a few years ago, another class of domains where the problem is solved uh, was found by McCarthy and Koshinsky, and actually making use of the Lampert theory, they gave a solution in the class of once more, strongly or uh, a strictly convex or strongly linearly convex domains in dimension two. Roughly speaking, these are precisely the red tracks. So the domain, uh, the sets in the by disk, which are extension, which have extension property, are up to some some natural assumptions, red tracks. Uh, so this is the same. So in, in these two classes of domains, two uh, quite complicated tools were used to show that the same uh, property holds for extension, for sets having the extension property. In the paper in memoirs of AMS in 2019, Agler, Rikova and Young found out that in the case of the symmetrized by disk, uh, the extension sets needn't be uh, red tracks. And actually, this is the, the main result of this, this, this paper, which is quite a long one. And for instance, uh, the, 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 the extension set, which is not a rat, retract, which is not a geodesic, a complex geodesic, is given by here. So it's the, it's the union of two, actually it's the union of images of two complex geodesic uh, of special form. So one interesting property, some interesting example illustrating that some properties which have which hold in 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 uh, two important classes of domains are not satisfied for the symmetrized by disk uh, another approach once more by agler wikova and young uh, was to try to characterize the symmetrized by disk by uh, conditions involving the, the form of the group of automorphism of the manifold. And although the, 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 the theorem is not as nice as it could probably be, there is, there is also some attempt to, 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 to produce such, a, such, uh, such results. So, so I will stop here about uh, speaking about the symmetrized uh, bytes. I will come back to the symmetrized bytes when comparing it to the tetra block. Tetra block was introduced once more, as I mentioned, but Young, uh, but Nicholas Young and his collaborators, <coughs> uh, some about 2007, and the, they found several uh, equivalent uh, properties describing the set. So this time we are having the domain in dimension three. And um, so these five conditions are equivalent. Uh, I will, so the first and the second are relatively, uh, so they are quite similar. These are analytic. The third one gives a description with the help of, of class of some rational mappings, uh, functions from, from, let's say, from C3 to D. The fourth one um, gives a similar description to the description of, or to the definition of the symmetrized by disk. I will uh, say a few words later about this description. The fourth one is, yeah, at first 
still quite complicated. But there are many, many, and there are more possible description of these uh, domains. So actually, oh, I haven't put the definition yet, but these are all uh, conditions which could be applied as a definition of the tetra block. So, uh, ah, so there is some, okay, some gap because actually I should define earlier E or say that uh, any uh, a domain, uh, the, the, the set of points X from C3, which satisfy one of these uh, properties uh, is the tetra block. So this, this is one of the possible descriptions, as I mentioned. So we are having the Cartan domain of the type two. So these are, uh, so this is some convex domain, uh, which is homogeneous. And this is the, 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 the space of uh, two times two matrices uh, having the norm smaller than one, and then we are having such a mapping uh, which uh, makes what? So we are having here the matrix two times two, and here we are having the elements of the diagonal and then the determinant. So we are seeing, we, so actually uh, one can see that this uh, mapping is a two to one mapping. Actually, this is some, um, in some sense, it will be proper when restricted to symmetric matrices uh, lying in the Cartan domain. And once more, the tetra block is a bounded hyperconvex, but not a convex domain. And now, um, that was once more um, initiated by Nicolas Young, who first found a complete description of the group of automorphism of the tetra block. It turned out to be non homogeneous. This time, uh, the orbit of zero of the origin is two dimensional. It's given as uh, so, it's the set of elements from the tetra block satisfying this equality. Later, it turned out that all proper holomorphic self mappings are automorphisms. It is a result of Kosinski. Let me draw your attention that this is uh, un this is unlike in the symmetrized by disk. There we are having the uh, proper non trivial proper holomorphic self mappings. And then finally, we are having the following result. It was proven finally in 2013, although uh, at first it was proven by this group around Nicolas Young, who proved this theorem or the part, first part of the uh, theorem for uh, one of the argument being zero and the other one ar uh, arbitrary point. As we shall see later, there is a big difference between this special case, so one of the arguments of the Lampert of Karat or Karatadori uh, pseudo distance of the Lemper function of character of pseudo distance when the one argument is zero and the other is arbitrary, and the other one when both arguments are arbitrary, uh, there is a big difference. And then, similarly, as in the case of the symmetrized by disk, the tetra block couldn't, uh, cannot be exhausted by domains by holomorphic to convex ones. In other words, tetra block is another domain which cannot be, uh, for which the Lampert theorem cannot be proven by the uh, methods of Lampert. Of Lampert. Actually, uh, unlike, uh, so actually, as I mentioned, in fact, we can al already prove the, the Lampert theorem for the symmetrized pi by disk by uh, the theory of Lampert, by the, by the results of Lampert. It was this result about the exhausting of, of the domains by strongly, strongly linearly convex domains. But in dimension, uh, but in, that, in this case, this is unclear. So at this moment, the tetra block is the only example, non trivial example, for which this Lampert theorem holds, and the Lampert theorem does not work in this case.
Uh, now, several properties, uh, I will list now as several properties uh, showing the difference or similarities between the tetra block and symmetrized bidisk. So, first, uh, so at first, in the symmetrized by disk, maybe I will not define the complex geodesics, but yeah, okay, I will mention only that the complex geodesics is a mapping from the unit disk to the domain for which there is a mapping from this domain such that the connection, the, the, the composition is the uh, is the automorphism, so maybe I will put the definition. So we are having the situation, the domain, T. Here we are having F from the unit disk. Here we are having, so it's the same as in the definition of the uh, Lempert function in Karatodori distance, but such that so F, and there is this F, this capital F, this is automorphism of the unit disk. So if for the mapping F, there is a capital F from the uh, domain D to the unit disk, such that the composition is the automorphism, then we say that the function, that the mapping small f is called a geodesic. Uh, then the capital F will be called the left inverse to this geodesic. So let me come back to the presentation. So as I mentioned, mm, in the symmetrized by this, we are having the uniqueness. Let me mention that in the case of the uh, by this, we are having highly non-uniqueness non of, uh, of, of geodesics. So although the symmetrized by this at some places is similar to the by disk, in other places it's much more different from the uh, by disk. Uh, in the tetra block, we don't have the uh, uniqueness of the complex geodesic. Another, there is a, at first view, unexpected relation between the, uh, sorry, between the tetra block and the symmetrized by this. There is a possibility of describing the symmetrized, uh, the tetra block by condition involving the symmetrized by this. This is given here. Uh, also, we know that the tetra block is C convex. So this similarly as the symmetrized by disk. But this problem is unclear, as I already mentioned. We don't know whether we may exhaust the tetra block by strongly linearly convex. And the last problem is a part of a much more general problem, whether, so this is also the, the next open problem, whether C convex domains, so this is not related directly to, to these domains, nevertheless at this point it's, it's, uh, it's natural that we formulate this, this, uh, this problem. So whether C convex domains may be exhausted by smooth, smic, uh, smooth C convex domains, which we already know that can be exhausted by strongly linearly convex domains, Mm, yeah. Uh, so at this point, maybe this remark about the, the, the operator theory on the symmetric by this, I will not. Uh, so it, it's, it was not my aim to, to leave it here because, as I mentioned, I want to say only uh, to, to, to talk today about the function theory. Uh, now, another phenomenon that is already known for the symmetrized by disk and which differs the symmetrized by disk to, uh, from, from the tetra block. So, any subset of the class of holomorphic functions from the domain D to the unit disk for which this uh, Karatodori distance may be uh, defined by holomorphic functions 
from the class C is called the universal set. Uh, an old result of Fisher, I think, from 60s states that if the planar domain with some mild assumptions has a one element universal set, then it must be the disk up to the biholomorphism, certainly. These minor assumptions are needed because, for instance, for the punctured unit disk, we, are, we also have one uh, point universal set. Uh, in high dimensional case, we have a similar analog. If the domain has a universal, if a domain in CN has a universal set consisting of n elements, then it must be the polydisc with some as in dimension two, there, there must be some, some minor, some natural assumptions. Uh, the symmetrized by this has the following universal set. Actually, it comes from or, already from uh, Young, from the first paper on the symmetrized by this, or, or, or this class of domains was formulated in the first paper already. Uh, and actually, when Young and his collaborators started to study the tetra block. I think that they thought that also in the, the case of the tetra block, the same would happen. Also, in the sense that some class of rational uh, functions will be a universal set for the tetra block. Uh, this class of domains, which was um, a class which could possibly be good as a class of universal set for, 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 for the Karatodori distance. is given here, it's a rational mapping of this form, where omega is from, has absolute value smaller than one, uh, not bigger than one. However, this class of domains, uh, this class of functions, which is defined here, unlike the case of the symmetrized by disk is not a family which decide, defines the character of the distance. Uh, actually, as I mentioned, uh, sigma here is the is the permutation of the first uh, two variables in C3. So the third is uh, fixed, and then we have the permutation of the first two variables. So actually, this class of function is a uh, universal set for this problem, for Kadratodori problem with the point zero fix. So actually, uh, these alphas found out that this class of domains may replace the class of holomorphic functions from the tetra block to the unit disk. Now, however, this J, which is defined here, it was this, this two dimensional uh, orbit of the origin. Uh, so there were there there turned out to uh, to to be geodesics complex geodesics omitting j and then actually th there is a big family of this geodesic and a much uh, wider class of functions is needed to define uh, to, to the the Karatodori, uh, distance uh, for for uh, arbitrary two arguments. This was actually proven in the same paper uh, where we proved the, the, the uh, Lempert theorem for the tetra block. There is some, there is a way to produce uh, from the geodesics passing through the origin. So, so we if we divide them out in the first and the third. Uh, coordinate, then we'll have also a geodesic, which, and if we are having for the geodesic passing through the origin, the left inverse, then we'll produce a, in that way, a function lambda, here is the function lambda, defined of on E of the value in, in the unit disk, being the left inverse to this to, to G. G will be G1, G2, G3. So this is the, uh, so we, uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, divided the, uh, the, the, the original geodesic in the first and the third uh, component, and then we get G. 
And actually, this theorem allowed to produce a new class of functions uh, which are needed to, uh, to have left inverses to our geodesics than those passing through zero, through the origin, or up to by holomorphism. And it turned out that this geodesic, uh, these left inverses are, yeah, are, are uh, explicitly given, and they, they are of this form. Uh, to visualize the phenomenon, it, we have the following class of functions, of mappings, which turn out to be uh, geodesics, for which no rational function of the form that uh, was uh, defined earlier uh, is the left inverse. However, one of these functions for some omega is a left inverse to this function. And the so that was at some point a uh, key, key point in the proof of this Lampert theorem for the tetra block, which, as I mentioned, uh, was much more complicated than in the say, case of the symmetrized by disk. And still, it is the only proof of the Lampert theorem for the tetra block. Yeah. Uh, so actually, we are having a complete description of the uh, of the complex geodesic in symmetrized by disk. This is a result of Agler and Young and Fluke and myself around 2005. Uh, so this this uh, this form is, comes from from our paper. The the form that Agler and Young found out is uh, to some extent it's over. It's over. Nevertheless, certainly this is equivalent. Uh, so, uh, so there, there are two classes of such geodesics. So this is the first ones which actually pass through the origin uh, up to the automorphism of the up to the automorphism of the symmetrized by disk, and this is the the special but relatively small class of our automorphism which do not intersect this, this special set, this special geodesic, the, origin, the, the orbit of the origin of the symmetrized by disk. Uh, so the complex geodesics in the symmetrized by disk are unique. This is, uh, this is also to some extent unexpected because in the case of the by disk we are having uh, non-uniqueness of this uh, and this non-uniqueness is very very big when my when i can say so uh, uh, from the board, the yeah okay so this is also uh, trivia. On the other hand, hand, it turns out that this mapping, this embedding of the uni, uh, of the by disk in the tetra block, produces non-uniqueness coming from somehow the non-uniqueness of geodesic in the by disk. Uh, so it so the non-uniqueness of geodesics in the by disk inherits the non-uniqueness of geodesics in the tetra block. Uh, maybe I will skip this. Maybe one more, some more things about the geodesics. So uh, the geodesics mm, in the symmetrized by, the, by disk are highly regular. They do it, they extend holomorphically through the boundary. Uh, in the tetra block, it is not the case. Uh, so, as I see, I already think that I should somewhere approach the end of the, my talk. So, uh, I think that I will skip the the part where I'm talking about the relation between the uniqueness of geodesics and the uniqueness or non-uniqueness of left inverses. This is also 
another uh, problem, which is very interesting in the case of the symmetrized by disk and the tetra block. Uh, let me also mention that we one can prove the C convexity of the tetra block, but this problem is uh, not solved yet, whether it can be exhausted by strongly linear Lecondre domains. This is already what I mentioned. The uh, tetra block is not a Lucky Kang domain, it is a result of Maria Tribua. And now, finally, I want to summarize several problems that are still uh, not solved and are somehow related to the topic of my talk. So, the first one, the first most interesting, I think, problem is whether the Leppert theorem holds for bounded C convex domains. The other one, which is somehow related. So, if the answer to the problem two is uh, positive, then the answer for the problem one will be positive. So, can C convex domains be exhausted by strongly linear convex ones? The third one is a special problem for the tetra block. The problem of description of extension sets seems to be very much complicated. Uh, as I mentioned, the description of extension sets in the symmetrized by disk was found by uh, Agler, uh, Wickova, and Young in a, a long, long paper. And it seems that some other method should be found out to find the description of extension sets in the tetra block because it would it should be much more complicated another problem that is somehow aside is the problem of the description of possible description of the group of automorphisms of the spectral unit so i hope that i showed you some of the facts that seem to for me, are quite interesting. Actually, as I mentioned, there are still, although these domains are studied for quite a long time, in 20, there are still new problems, new papers appear. Uh, as I mentioned, this is not only interesting for complex analysis analysts, but also for people working in, in operator theory, where many papers are also uh, published. And I am quite sure that some of our problems or applications of this of these two domains will be found in the future. Okay, thank you very, very much. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you for the nice, very nice talk. Uh, and I want to ask if there are some questions. Uh, maybe, can I ask, uh, Blodek? Sure. So, um, I think the symmetrized uh, by disk is not Gromov hyperbolic. Yeah. But what about the tetra block? Uh, well, I think that this was already solved. Also, was it in the same paper? Because there is embedding of this uh, symmetrized by disk in the tetra block, I think that that should be also somehow non uh, Gromov hyperbolic. But actually, at this moment, I don't know. Okay. But I think that it was Nikolov and, and his collaborators who, who, who mm. were considering this, this class. So, so this the, the, the answer should be no. That's point. I think that should be known. Yeah. Uh, are there other questions? Well, uh, then I'll, I'll go. Uh, you, you said that there are that been work on uh, there's been works on on the operator theory. Yeah. Uh, so one question is if you can tell me in what setting and the other question that i have is uh, if is the, the burma kernel somehow has been computed explicitly is it possible or is it some yeah so uh, so 
for the second question, then uh, for the Bergman kernel, the, the, the formula is explicit for the um, for the symmetrized polyps actually, oh. because this is the Bell formula uh, relating so for, for the proper holomorphic mapping. So it relates the polydisc with the uh, symmetrized polydisc, and so actually this is applying this formula with some. Uh, some calculations, and although uh, this is quite complicated in higher dimensional case, I mean, and, and uh, equal to three and higher, and in the dimension two, this is relatively simple. I think that is a, a rational function, uh, and then it is relatively easy to 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 see that it does not have any zero. So this the Lucky King problem. As to um, the tetra block, the formula. Uh, how was it proven? Because, as I mentioned, this was proven that this is non Lucky Kank domain. Uh, I think that, yeah, okay, this, the formula is also explicit some, okay. to, to some extent, but it's not, not as easy as in this case of the uh, right. Actually, uh, also uh, some formula, so this formula was for the symmetric policy, this was originally uh, found out by Eddie Garian and myself, and later it was extended by Misra, by three Indian um, mathematicians, for for um, weighted Bergman uh, kernel, okay. uh, with similar methods. Yeah, so this is as to the problem of the Bergman kernel. So. Actually, this is relatively well explicitly written, relatively. Uh, as to the problem of, 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 of uh, functional theory, uh, net fun uh, operator theory, uh, then what is the... Mm, okay, it concerns... Sorry. So, oh, it's so okay. Anyway. I, I, I will. I'm right. not and I don't want to. No, but anyway, I guess if you know what the Bromor kernel is, uh, I guess then it will be probably operators related to the uh, to Euclid's ankle or these kind of things on uh, on Burma spaces. Uh, I imagine. Yeah. But anyway, okay. Uh, thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, if not the case, we thank the speaker again. Yeah. So I want to thank you for, for invitation, and I'm so happy to be for the first time in Rome <laughs> in this way.